pretend we're in the middle of the fight, but we're not fighting, we're watching. This is gonna be good. What's up, Jet Team? Welcome to the channel. My name's Ryan. If you haven't been here before, I'm a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, and current commercial pilot. And I use that experience to break down epic aviation videos, stories, and subjects that you send to me on Instagram. And today, we're gonna be talking about the Behind Enemy Lines trailer. I'm gonna break it down from the fighter pilot perspective. But before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button for me and maybe even subscribe. Every time you like and subscribe, you create a mini sonic boom somewhere in the world. And I would just greatly appreciate it. And you're probably asking yourself, maybe, maybe not, why are they flying F-18s in behind enemy lines when Scott O'Grady, who this movie is based on, flew Air Force F-16s? Well, if you stay to the very end of this video, I'm gonna tell you why I think they did it. With that said, let's dive into behind enemy lines. Here we go. Unless we're parked in San Diego Bay, you're at war every time you step on this boat. You understand that? And we're in the middle of the fight, but we're not fighting, we're watching. Okay, so right off the bat, this admiral or commander is calling out Lieutenant Burnett. He's like, look, I need you to shut up and color. I need you to get in the jet, fly your sorties, turn some wheels, light some afterburners. That's all I really care about. But Lieutenant Burnett's frustrated, right? And that's how fighter aviation can be. It's hours of boredom followed by minutes of sheer terror because a lot of times you're passing up intelligence and different visuals to sources that are making strategic decisions. So it can definitely be frustrating. However, what I saw from some of the best leaders is they kind of understood that frustration. And so if we came to them with some sort of frustration, they'd say, look, I understand completely what you're saying. I'm going to take this information up to my superiors. But at the end of the day, I need you to keep doing what you're doing because it is making a difference. I think if you come at it like that, you establish some mutual respect. So come on, Admiral, you can do better than that. <laughs> you're not in a fight, Lieutenant. You wouldn't last long. You know. <laughs> okay, so they're gonna get a little bit dramatic, but I understand. But you know what? Honestly, at the end of the day, this kind of thing can happen. So I had this situation with a boss of mine, and let's just say we kind of, you know, we butted heads a little bit, but I was trying to speak truth to power, kind of like Lieutenant Burnett is doing here. And that boss didn't really want to hear it. But I would come to that boss with a solution of, hey, I think we could change this and it would make the team more safe. It would make this squadron operate better. And this boss basically said, just remember who's in charge of your rankings, Lieutenant Bodenheimer. I'm like, wow. I'm like, dude, really? Like we had to get all dramatic on it. So this kind of thing can happen, unfortunately, but there are better leaders out there than what is portrayed by this admiral so far. We'll see if he gets any better as the trailer goes on world where outlaw armies wage a secret war the navy's most powerful ship is not free to strike back you understand how important it is that your pilots don't stray from the big fly zone and no one felt it more than lieutenant chris burnett don't you so when it comes to fighter aviation there are a lot of times where you have to show restraint just like this carrier can't strike back there's certain rules of engagement with the no fly zone i actually know a pilot a strike eagle pilot who was in a dogfight with a russian su-27 now i'll do a video on that later down the line comment below if you want me to do that video but essentially he was in a position to shoot but he decided not to even though maybe he could have based on the roe the rule of engagement at the time and more on why he didn't in a follow-on video but a lot of times in fighter aircraft you're the judge jury and executioner you've got to make sure you got your head on straight and you can make decisions because what you do could cause world war three so it's an interesting dynamic up there. Okay, what you doing? Are you kidding me? I'm eating jello. He's wiping his hands. I kind of like this part. So Lieutenant Burnett is bringing some lightheartedness to this super intense career profession. And I think from you know, having people like this in my squadrons was awesome. You need people who can kind of lighten the mood a little bit. When you get up in the fighter jet, it's essentially all business, unless you're doing an aileron roll on the way home, which Guilty. <laughs> but at the end of the day, having a lighthearted person in your squadron just kind of makes everything better, relieves a little bit of stress. So I'm eating Jello. He's wiping his hands. I like that they added that in. Routine reconnaissance mission. 
would be a good opportunity to test our shiny new digital camera. All right, so he's gonna test his shiny new digital camera. So Lieutenant Burnett is a weapon systems operator. You can see he's sitting in the back of the F-18 and it's similar to the F-15E where the Wizos had controllers on the sides and they could operate that shiny digital camera, the pod, to see what's going on with the different things that are being observed. So the Wizzo as the hero of the film, I love it. You know, keep it coming. He saw something. supposed to see. Eliminate the problem. So a lot of times with these service to air missiles, what the enemy will do is they'll leave the radars off on these things and then they'll turn them on last second. Think about it like a shark attack, right? A shark coming from underneath you, it's gonna be really hard to defend against. But if you saw its fin, you know, way out in the distance, you could swim over here, you know? Just like in a fighter jet, if you saw some sort of a radar signature, some sort of threat, you could get away from it. But if they just turn the radar on when you're right underneath it, that's a hard one to defend against and it looks like that's what happened here. Also, these operators of these service air missiles will usually shoot two missiles just because the first one you're gonna pull a lot of G to get around and hopefully it explodes underneath you but then the second one you're gonna have less energy to defend against and that's why that's one of their tactics so we've lost a bird So Lieutenant Burnett, Archangel, he's on the run. He's essentially entering the SEER world. Survival, evasion, resistance, and escape. All fighter pilots and all air crew for the Air Force and the Navy and the Marines, if you're gonna be potentially flying in harm's way, you're gonna go to a SEER school. Survival, evasion, resistance, escape. There are SEER professionals there that all they do is focus on how to do those four things extremely well. I love working with those people. They're extremely knowledgeable and they teach you a lot of things that initially, if you eject out of an aircraft, you're gonna to wanna to rely on your training because your adrenaline's gonna be pumping, you may have an injury, and what they say to do initially is to grab as much gear as you can and go to a hole up site. Get out of that area, get out of the exact area where the parachute came down, maybe where the jet is, because all those things are gonna highlight your position. And speaking of highlight your position, Lieutenant Burnett sitting up on the very tip top of this hill, that's a big no-no because you could see that silhouette for miles around. Think about if you're out like hiking or something and you're going to a peak, you can probably look up there and see people at the top because their silhouette is going to be highlighted by the sky. So you want to be a little further down on that hill to not highlight yourself, but he did get away from the crash scene and he's still alive. So he's winning so far. I'm a run. survive. Do whatever it takes. Do you have any idea how much damage this incident may cause to the peace process? All I know, Admiral, is that our man is down behind enemy. I am an American. I am on your side. 20th Century Fox presents. They kill my pilot because we took pictures of the grave and I know where they are. I'm gonna get them. I'm not gonna let that kid die out there. You will lose your command. So be it. Owen Wilson. Gentlemen, I intend to put you in harm's way. Any man who doesn't wish to join this mission, step away, right? Okay, so the Admiral reached down deep. He got some cojones and he is ready to go back and get his air crew. I love that. Basically, like he's redeeming himself. He comes across as that super hardcore Admiral. But at the end of the day, he's got the right perspective. It's all about taking care of your people and accomplishing the mission. So he's back on my Christmas card list. <laughs> So there you go, guys, there's the trailer. Now, whenever an air crew goes down behind enemy lines, there is a massive operation put into motion to get that pilot out of there. Now, it involves the Marines, the Navy, the Air Force, especially pararescue, maybe the Navy SEALs, but at the end of the day, it's this coordinated joint effort to go in and get that person out. So whenever I was flying fighter jets, it was really cool to know that if I got shot down, some massive force would come and try their best to get me out. Now, there's no guarantees, but in the case of Scott O'Grady, they sent in a massive amount 
of firepower to get him out of there. There were two Marine helicopters, there was 50 Marines, maybe even a little bit more, and certain special operations forces were there as well. The only downside from Scott O'Grady's perspective is he actually ran out of the woods holding a gun. Not something you wanna do when you've got Marine door gunners there looking to light up anyone from the enemy. So luckily he didn't get lit up, he popped the smoke at the exact right time and he was able to get rescued. Now super awesome of that rescue force to get him out of there. Again, the SEER teams that go and just teach all of us how to get out of these situations are definitely heroes and in my opinion, they're the reason why Scott O'Grady made it out alive. So you made it to the end of the video and I am a man of my word. So I told you, you know, why are they using F-18s with the Navy when this was an F-16 that Scott O'Grady was flying in from the Air Force when he got shot down? Well, ultimately it comes down to access. And I think the Navy's really great about access because their highest ranking officers, the most of them, aren't air crew. They're not fighter pilots. They're focused on the boats. They're focused on the aircraft carriers and the massive responsibility that that is. So it's kind of like those that are in charge of naval aviators and naval aviation. They're like, yeah, yeah just, just handle it. You know, make sure you take care of business. We don't want to have to deal with that. Like, just do it. And they're like, cool. So we've got like kind of control over naval aviation and it, there's a little bit less red tape. Whereas in the Air Force, the highest ranking officers are all in charge of the fighter squadrons, the different jet squadrons that are out there. So maybe a little more red tape. However, what a great movie. So excited that this thing came out because ultimately it highlights a lot of the strengths that the different services bring to the fight. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Before we go, if you would, just go ahead and <laughs> dominate that like button for me. Maybe even subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Most of all, have a great day.